Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I wanna to show you how to set up your TurboGrafx-16 emulator within RetroPie on your Raspberry Pi. It's also known as the PC Engine in other parts of the world. I'm in the US and I always remember it as the TurboGrafx-16. In this video, we are gonna go over what format the ROMs need to be in, which BIOS you need to run the TurboGrafx-16 slash PC Engine games, and at the end of this video, I will show you how to change the logo on screen from PC Engine to TurboGrafx-16. Now, when you install these games, it will automatically show up as PC Engine, but if you're like me and you want the TurboGrafx-16 logo, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Before we go to the PC and transfer our ROMs, we need to get our IP address from our Raspberry Pi. Now, you can always transfer these ROMs with a USB stick, if that's how you transfer ROMs, the ROMs need to go in the PC Engine folder under ROMs, and your BIOS needs to go in the BIOS folder on your USB stick. I always transfer my ROMs using network transfer. My Raspberry Pi is connected to the same network as the PC I am transferring these ROMs from. Let's get our IP address just in case we can't connect with forward slash forward slash RetroPie. We'll go into the RetroPie menu here, Scroll down here to show IP. When you click on this, you will get a gray box and it will show you your IP address. Write it down, take a picture of it, remember it. It'll be something like 192-168-10-128. It's going to be different from that number that I just stated. So write it down, remember it, we're gonna need that. We're gonna move to the PC now. And remember, this computer is connected to the same exact network as my Raspberry Pi here. I'm back at the PC now. My Raspberry Pi is still running. The Raspberry Pi is on the exact same network as the PC I am using now. This is very important. On my desktop, I have a folder with my TurboGrafx-16 or my PC Engine games, and I have a PC Engine BIOS. The games need to be file extension.pce. If you get these games and they are zipped, go ahead and unzip them. You can use WinRAR or 7-zip. I prefer using WinRAR, but they have to be file extension PCE file. So .pce. If they are not, they will not work. Now one of the most important things is the BIOS. A lot of people overlook the BIOS for the TurboGrafx-16 or the PC Engine. This BIOS is 256 kilobytes. The name is SYSCard3.pce. I cannot show you where to get this. I can only tell you that Google is your friend. Very important to have that BIOS. I'm going to transfer my ROMs to my Raspberry Pi using network transfer. I'm going to move the BIOS and the ROMs into the correct folders. We can do that by opening up a new file explorer. Our quick access bar at the top here. You can type in backslash backslash all capital. RetroPie and press enter. If you are unable to access this by typing in backslash backslash all capital RetroPie, you can type in your IP address. And that's why you remembered it. That's why we looked it up. Go to your quick access bar, backslash backslash 192-168-10-164. That's my IP address. Yours is probably different. Press enter. We are now in the Raspberry Pi using our IP address. I'm just gonna snap this to the side. I'm gonna open up my folder with my PC Engine, BIOS, and ROMs inside of it. Now our BIOS folder is syscard3.pce. Needs to go in our BIOS folder. Just drag and drop. And our ROMs need to go inside of our ROMs folder, PC Engine. I'm just going to copy these, drag them over. And that's it, guys. We're going to go to the Raspberry Pi. You need to reboot the Raspberry Pi one time in order for the PC Engine logo or emulator to show up on the front end. We're going there now. So I'm back at my Raspberry Pi, the emulation station or RetroPie front end here, and we do not see PC Engine or the Turbo Graphics emulator listed. We need to do one reboot. 
I wanted to let you know that this is RetroPie 4.0 beta, but this will work on pretty much all of the RetroPies from 3 all the way up. Press start on your controller, scroll down to quit, restart emulation station. Really restart if you want to. We now have the PC Engine logo here. We can start playing our games. The controller is automatically mapped when you set it up at the initial setup of your Retro Pi. I will just try R-Type really quick. And I've had great luck leaving it stock. I haven't changed the core or anything like that. I've had really good luck. And the emulator runs pretty amazing. I am using a Bluetooth PS3 controller and it works fine. Press start and select to exit. We can go to Splatterhouse and play that also. So you're pretty much done setting it up. Um, everything really works pretty well. It does run at full speed, I believe. I mean, I haven't had any lag or any trouble playing these games. If that's all you needed, you're done. That's how you set up Turbo Graphics or PC Engine on your RetroPie. If you would like to change this PC Engine logo to a Turbo Graphics 16 logo, it does take a little bit of work, but I'm going to show you how to do it. It's not easy. We need to download an application in order to SSH into our RetroPie. By the end of this video, you'll be set up with the Turbo Graphics logo. Now, I'm not sure if the work is really worth changing this to Turbo Graphics, but I wanted to show you guys anyway. If you're content with the PC Engine logo, you're done. Thank you for watching. Um, if you could, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want a Turbo Graphics logo, let's go back to the PC. We're going to leave the Raspberry Pi connected to the network and running just like it is. If you're still with me and you want to change the PC Engine logo to the Turbo Graphics logo, you are what the kids nowadays I think are calling cray cray. But I'm going to show you how to do it. It's really not that hard. You need two applications. We're going to need Putty and WinSCP. There are tons of applications that you can use, but I use Putty and WinSCP. We're going to open up a browser. We are going to go to putty.org. All the links will be in the description. You can download Putty here. Very easy to download. You'll just drag this and put it on your desktop to open it. There's no install. Next, we'll go to winscp.net and we'll download WinSCP. The download is here. Installation packages. You'll need to install this and it'll be located on your desktop. We're going to open up Putty. We're going to open up Putty. From here, you can just type in RetroPie. If RetroPie does not connect, use your IP address that you got at the beginning of the video. Connection type, we want to SSH into it. Click Open. You can also save your configuration here if you'd like. Click Open. Yes. We're going to log in as Pi, P-I, and our password is Raspberry. We need to enable root access within RetroPie. So, I made a little text file that I'm going to upload for you guys. And I always open mine up in Notepad++. If you're doing anything with the Raspberry Pi, I recommend Notepad++ for Windows. It's so much simpler. You see it itemizes everything and puts it in columns for you. Pi at RetroPie. We need to sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash ssh forward slash sshd 
underscore config. I'm just gonna copy and paste this. It makes it so much simpler. Press enter. From here, we need to look for the line permit root login without password. And it's located right here. And we just need to change this to permit root login, yes. Control X, press Y, press enter. We need to change our root password now. We can do that by typing in sudo space P-A-S-S-W-D space root. It's right here in the text file. This will be downloadable from the description of this video. I will upload it to my Dropbox. Press enter. Now you can type in any password you'd like. I'm just gonna go one, two, three. Retype the new Unix password. One, two, three, enter. We need to reboot the Raspberry Pi one time. And you can do that directly from this terminal. sudo reboot enter. Now it's going to log us out of the PuTTY application, which is totally fine. We can close PuTTY now because we're done with PuTTY. We're now going to have to open WinSCP. From within here, keep this at SFTP. Our host name will be RetroPy or your IP address if you're unable to log in with RetroPie. Our username is going to be root, and our password will be the password we just set up. One, two, three, log in. It connected to the host. From this window here, I'm gonna open this folder, find etc, open etc, find emulation station, open emulation station and we need to edit the es underscore systems dot config so I'll right click edit in here we need to find name PC engine name so we'll scroll down these should be in alphabetical order here's my PC engine we're going to have to change this right here and I'm going to go to the website, but I will leave this in another text file for you. We'll just change it to this. Copy. So we'll copy this. Copy. And paste it in between the system and system. I don't copy the system or the system. Sometimes it messes up the spacing. Just in between here, I will paste, click my blue save button, exit when SCP. Okay. We're going to go back to the Raspberry Pi, reboot it one time, and if we did everything correctly, the PC Engine logo should have changed to the Turbo Graphics 16 logo. Let's go over to the Pi and see if we did this correctly. I was unable to capture my screen when I went to restart, but I just restarted the system. And when it boots up, we should see the TurboGrafx-16 logo. I haven't done this before, and I hope it works. So, let's see. Come on, baby. Sweet. It works. That's pretty cool. So I didn't want to tell you guys at the beginning of this, but I have never tried to change this logo to the TurboGrafx-16 logo. Um, this tutorial was kind of a spur of the moment thing. A lot of people had asked me if I could show them how to do it. And there you have it, guys. If you could, click that like button and subscribe because I have a lot more coming. And like always, thanks for watching.